Okay, I think we'll get started. So this is the introductory video for this act, real hands-on activity-based course on uh, microcontrollers, particularly the PIC 10F200. This is a microcontroller uh, developed by the Microchip Corporation. It's uh, very primitive. It's probably the simplest, it's among the simplest microcontrollers there is. Um, but it offers a lot in terms of really getting to learn the, the, the details about what goes on in these microcontrollers without being overwhelmed by uh, all that you need to learn. Uh, we'll see that this is a just a six pin microcontroller. It's got the ground pin, the, the high volt, the five volt pin, and then it has uh, four input output pins and that's it. Uh, no analog to digital, no comparators, uh, just a digital input and output. But we'll be able to see we can do quite a bit with that. Uh, and it has some memory, so we'll learn about writing to memory. This will all be done in assembly code. So certainly you can write in C, uh, but I think it's nice to start with assembly and really understand the registers that you're talking about, the limited instruction set that you have to work with, and then trying to think about ways to get things to happen with this microcontroller. Now, before I go into the curriculum here, I think I'll start over here. I don't want to say too much about myself, but uh, I'm Darren Olmus. I'm a physical chemist. I work at Concordia College in the chemistry department, but I also teach courses in physics and in the neuroscience program there. Uh, I'm certainly not an expert in uh, electronics and um, computers. Uh, I loved electronics as a kid and did, I, I really was heading, I thought, towards being an electrical engineer uh, through my first two years of high school and actually had a really good uh, electronics courses at Moorhead High School in Moorhead, Minnesota. But then I started to shift towards chemistry and math, and so in college I was a chemistry and math major also at Concordia College in Moorhead, Minnesota. Uh, but then I went out to get my PhD in physical chemistry at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. Uh, there I studied nonlinear laser spectroscopy. Uh, I applied all over the country and uh, actually ended up back here at Concordia College in, uh, in Moorhead. And so, sorry, came full circle and I've been here 25 years and my research is primarily focused on laser spectroscopy although as of late I've um, I'm also very interested in mathematics and so I as of late most of my papers uh, have been in mathematics uh, until very very recently where I've gotten back to some more physical chemistry so I'm an optical spectroscopist uh, but uh, I live by this famous saying by a famous chemist, G.N. Lewis. In most physical chemistry books, you'll find this saying. It says, physical chemistry is anything that's interesting. And I think just the, the uh, being a physical chemist makes you interested in understanding how nature works. It also gives you humility along with confidence. So you learn that you uh, certainly don't know everything, uh, but you also learn how to you, you become empowered and you know how to how to learn stuff. And so as of very recently, uh, I'm really interested in fully understanding computers from the chemistry that goes into making the MOSFET trans transistors all the way up to uh, the architecture, the language encoding, uh, and then up to uh, the very recent uh, machine learning and AI that's happening. And I feel like uh, that if uh, you gain an understanding at the very deepest level of how computers work, that helps you understand um, the, the more higher level stuff. That actually is more applied and more applicable to society, uh, but uh, you have this deeper understanding. And so one of the things that I started learning about is microcontrollers. I'm really interested in embedded systems. Uh, and I wanted to learn a little bit about assembly language, because that's almost like the ones and zeros. So you feel pretty close to the computer uh, at that time. And so I 
discovered the PIC microcontrollers and they uh, seem to be ideal in terms of trying to wrap my head around uh, what's going on. And so, uh, although I'm again not an expert here, hopefully I can take you through some of some valuable activities that will help you uh, develop in this area and then you can take it further, try to get connected with real experts if that's the direction you want to go. Uh, and, um, and, and just take off from there. All right, so maybe I'll just kind of outline the course and uh, you can get a feel for if this is something you want to launch into. So mostly this is lab-based, so you'll be working uh, hands-on, but we do need to learn a little bit first. And so uh, there's actually a fairly long 28-minute uh, lecture on going through the data sheet. And this, what I would do here when you watch this, maybe at double speed, uh, and just watch it through. Don't worry about picking everything up on this. Just sort of hear the words that are being written in the data sheet. Maybe print off the data sheet for yourself and follow along. But don't feel like you have to internalize everything. I, certainly when I was reading through the data sheet, it was, you know, very, you know, it's intimidating and, you know, can you get your head around everything and what do all these words mean? So uh, we'll take kind of a cyclic attack through this. Uh, then we need to set up, so uh, I am, we, we use uh, some microchip, the makers of PIC TANF200 have their own integrated development environment for both, uh, uh, it, you can do both assembly coding and C coding in it, and even, I think even C++ in it. So you have to download that. I do not go into that. There's there's a number of videos online and it's very straightforward, just like downloading and installing uh, any program. I've worked with it, successfully installed it and worked with it in uh, Windows 11. That was essentially Im immediate. That worked right away. Uh, with Unix, which I'm not very good at Unix, um, <coughs> I it, it worked. I did need to ask ChatGPT a couple of things to help me get it uh, all installed correctly. And then Mac, I don't have a Mac, so I haven't been able to see how it is on a Mac. So I'll kind of let you be on your own in terms of getting that onto your computer and whichever computer you have. Uh, and so uh, you can find lots of videos on that. And that's the MP Lab from Microchip. And you'll, uh, you'll, I think you'll figure out how to install it. So this will be focused primarily on, once you've got it installed, how do you start a new package, uh, 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 project? And there's two modes that we'll be working with. One in simulator mode, and this you could do this without buying any electronics or getting your hands on any electronics, although I really encourage you to actually work with the microprocessor. Uh, in the simulation mode, you can also, uh, it, you can also set up a debugger that allows you to step through each, and that's where you really, really learn what's going on in the, in the microchip. Unfortunately, I don't think, although it says in the data sheet you can, but I don't think with the typical uh, de debuggers, which uh, I have the PICKIT 5, uh, that it works to do in-circuit debugging on the chip. So we do really want to learn this preliminary uh, stuff without the without the microchip itself because that's where we can walk through the program. Once we get the microchip, then we have to kind of just let it go and do other other ways of figuring out what went wrong with our program. So after this, uh, nothing here requires any of the equipment yet. Lab one uh, will just involve working with some of the instructions. So we'll be doing some arithmetic. So we'll just be adding, multiplying, and then we'll taking the modulo uh, and finding the residue for uh, a number modulo m. And this will get us uh, some familiarity with loops. So in assembly programming, there's not really a for or while, although you can, you, you or you can't call something called for or while, uh, and so you have to work with what you got. And uh, so thinking about how you do loops, this will help us do that. Then uh, this concept of indirect 
memory, uh, memory addressing. This was a difficult one for me, but uh, I think I kind of got it figured out. This is uh, working with pointers rather than directly the direct memory. So many times we'll be just writing directly to the memory. And in fact, we actually won't be using this much. So this is the lab where, where, we would, where we'll talk about it, and that'll be about it. Uh, but you can see, uh, you know, pointers are such an important thing in higher level languages that sort of getting some of these ideas is important. Then uh, we'll have another preliminary lecture on just starting a new product project once you have uh, your PIC 10F200 and your PIC Kit 5. Now PIC Kit 4 works. Um, what, when I, the, the installs I have, PIC Kit 3, which I also have in the lab, doesn't work, but I think I saw that their, the new update for MP Lab is um, does support resupport the PIC Kit 3. So if you've got a 4 or a 5, that will work for sure. Um, and so we'll talk about it with the PIC Kit 5. The first lab with that is the or the quintessential hello world version of embedded systems and that is to get your microcontroller to blink an LED. So we'll do that and you'll get a feel for just wiring it up and getting some of the circuitry uh, done. Then we'll just talk a little uh, digital logic and uh, we'll make a four, uh, four choice blinker uh, based on user input there. Then we enter a series of three labs where we're interacting with the microchip a little bit more. And so we'll be using our computers to send information to the microchip or get information from the uh, microcontroller. Uh, and so this is an uh, important concept, uh, well, a couple of important concepts here. Uh, we'll be looking at the UART or Universal Asynchronous Receiving and Transmitting Protocol, which is a simple straightforward way to communicate between devices so it's a good to get familiarity with that uh, and then this concept of uh, bit banging so uh, in the software we will have to write ones and zeros to communicate back and forth and the ones and zeros are in the form of five volts or zero volts back and forth with the uh, with the computer we'll make a simple toggle switch uh, and this is this is modeled something that I use in the in my optics lab, actually, where a button uh, a keyboard press from the computer will uh, toggle just on and off the um, microprocessor. Then we'll get into a little more sophisticated stuff where we will read data sent from the microcontroller or from the computer, sorry, and store it in. Uh, memory on the micro on the uh, PIC 10F200, and then of course if we want to read, we need to write, and so the third lab in that will be writing with the microcontroller. Now, although this is not a course on uh, digital electronics, I think it is interesting to see some important uh, digital electronics that can interface here, and we're going to focus in on shift registers. There's two basic types, well, there's several basic types of shift registers. Two main types are where the data is, uh, where the data are put in uh, serially and then outputted uh, parallelly or vice versa. And so uh, it's an obvious couple of experiments would be to do one of each here. And here in the first one, we're going to use our PIC kit 10 f 200 to write to a uh, external shift register and then that will output something uh, based on what what it writes and then uh, conversely we'll take some parallel input and uh, that will write to the microcontroller and then that will do something and here for here we're going to have a user input um, uh, blinking the LED again so a lot of blinking of LEDs and then finally, we'll finish with something that I'm actually going to work in using some of my neuroscience courses, and that is to have the PIC 10F200 act as a simulated neuron. And um, neurons communicate via electronic, um, uh, electrical and chemical signaling, and there's input and there's output. 
And so there's very much an analogy with these simple microcontrollers. And you can have those as a single neuron unit, and then you can build collections of these neurons. And so I think this is a nice little practical example, uh, and it's one that I'm certainly going to use uh, coming up and teaching my courses not on this, but uh, in physical neuroscience. All right, uh, so supplies, there is, if you do want to get your hands on things, unfortunately there is going to be a cost. Uh, good side is the PIC 10F200 is, uh, I think it's 86 cents or 85 cents uh, at DigiKey. Of course, then you have to pay for the shipping. Um, but easily, e pretty easy to buy a, a number of these in case you fry one. Uh, and I, I have noticed that they are a little sensitive to electrical um, spikes and other things. So I'd encourage you to maybe get five or ten if you can uh, of those just so you have them. The big cost is going to be in the encoder. And unfortunately, that's just something that you're going to need to get. Uh, you might be able to find some a little cheaper on eBay. You don't have to buy the latest version, which is the Pick Kit 5. You can get the Pick Kit 4. And as I said in the beginning, maybe the Kit Pick Kit 3. Um, it wasn't working for me at first, and then so then I got the Pick Kit 5, and then I haven't used, tried it since. But I think there's an update that does now uh, retroactively use the allow for the use of the Pick Kit 3. So you might be able to pick those up uh, rather cheaply. Then uh, definitely I think you want a uh, breadboard so that you can uh, wire things together more conveniently. Uh, and then you will definitely want uh, a few electronics, not much. Um, yeah, really you don't even need capacitors or transistors. Uh, for the labs that we're going to do. Yeah, I think just a resistor set, mostly uh, maybe like some 470 ohm or 330 ohm. You just need a, uh, somewhere like a 220 to 470 is typically what's used uh, to help protect the, limit the current for LEDs. Uh, and so we'll be getting a lot of <coughs> LED in and out. Then I think you'll probably want some higher resistor uh, to, um, use as pull up or pull down resistors for inputs and so maybe like some 10k ohm resistors uh, but if you get a nice resistor set which i think you can usually get for around ten dollars or so and then an led set um, you probably can stay under 25 dollars there uh, and so hopefully not too bad for you or you can get a hold of these or, or, or maybe borrow borrow them if you are um, a concordia student and you um, and you want to maybe borrow some of these just get in contact with me and uh, maybe through the department we can uh, get you a little kit to work with uh, while you're working on this. Uh, finally for those of you who are not at Concordia I, again I hope you can use this um, and uh, uh, feel free to reach out through the through the comments or um, you can find me at Concordia College uh, I don't know how much I'll be able to respond, uh, but certainly we'll try to. And, um, and finally, if you're a you know if you're a, a high school kid, I really encourage you to uh, live a life of science. It's a wonderful uh, it's wonderful to know how things work, and um, so uh, I encourage you to do that. And uh, if you have any questions about maybe becoming a physical chemist or becoming uh, electrical engineer, although I can't answer as much about that. Um, also feel free to reach out and certainly feel free to look at uh, Concordia or other colleges where you might further your education in, in science. All right, so with that, uh, that's the introduction to this course. And uh, again, hopefully you'll find it uh, fun and valuable.